Hello, everyone. How you doing? <laughs> oh, we got a lot of silence. Okay, y'all are going to have to talk. You're going to have to talk um, in this class. I was going to, uh, nope, nope. I'm Francis, Francis Smallwood. Um, and I'm a member here at Maysville and an interpreter here at Maysville. And um, I'm also a professional community interpreter, an RID certified interpreter. I started interpreting in church worship services when I was uh, probably 13, probably. Um, I know that I was behind a microphone at the age of 15 interpreting a gospel meeting. <laughs> I don't know how well that went over. I don't know, you know, what kind of job I did, but they gave me the mic and said, do it. Like, okay. So I've been doing, and I've been interpreting a very, very long time. Um, that said, there's a whole lot I don't know about interpreting and Things change even all the time in, in my mind and in my perception of, of how I approach my work, what I do. I'm going to pass out copies of the RID Code of Professional Conduct so that you can have a copy. Um, so tell me about yourselves. Who do we have in here? Um, how many of you are interpreting in a religious setting in church. Right here in life. Okay. Hello. Is it interpreter class? Yes. Come on in. Come on in. Yes. Okay. I'm Francis, and um, we're going to talk about. RID, Code of Professional Conduct, CPC, and does it relate to church and church work? And does it relate and how does it relate? And I was making the statement that I don't know. I, this lesson has really been a struggle for me, okay? So I'm just going to open, I'm going to put that out there first. Um, I am a community interpreter. I run an interpreting agency. I am a professional, down in the gut, boundaries, rules, black, white, interpreters, neutral, and interpreters are confidential, da 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 da. And then I'm a church interpreter, deaf, my friends, my family, um, their soul is important to me. And well, you know, sometimes it's a little hard. It is not the obvious things like, should I go interpret their doctor's appointment? Because I do many times. I do that. But this is a stuff like, how open can we be? How much of a bond can we have if, you know, three weeks later, three years later, I'm interpreting and you're getting a divorce. Well, obviously, I know I should not do that myself. But does everyone know that? Maybe they want me. So that's that kind of uh, sticky. And I'm telling you, 45 minutes, we are not going to figure it out. We're not. Just, okay? Uh, but those are some of the issues that have come up and um, it's, it's a tough place for, I won't say church interpreter, 
church interpret. That's what I'm going to call us. Um, so, okay. Most of you interpret in church. How many of you interpret in the community? Anywhere else? With friends? Okay. So two or three? Two or three? Mm hmm Okay. Um, so let me ask you this. What do deaf people know about the CPC? Professional interpreters, deaf people, what do they know about the CPC? Almost nothing. Almost nothing. <laughs> they know a little bit. <laughs> To be honest with you, very little, especially deaf leaders, they may know about it, but because the leaders have been experienced frustration and oppression, they're not comfortable talking about it or they don't want to deal with it. I'm finding that within my deaf community, there's a lot of suppression and a lot of animosity even within the church. And we have to be very careful with the deaf leaders in the community because even just recently, our local deaf organization uh, just fell, fell to the ground, collapsed. They've hired a lawyer. They're trying to divide the money and split it several different ways amongst different deaf organizations and the school for the deaf. and. And there's permanent damage that has been suffered, and I've tried to stay out of it. Even though I'm in the deaf community, I want to help people through the healing process. Right, right. And deaf people, what they know about the CPC is code of ethics. Code of ethics. What's code of ethics mean? It means confidentiality. Interpreters must be confidential. Can you see over this? I need to move it. Okay. Okay. And he he touched on all of that. Am I involved in the deaf community and any brouhaha? But meanwhile, I'm keeping my boundaries. But meanwhile, it's affecting the church and our people at the church. And there's there's a lot of this. There's a lot of this that we experience. Um, I also added that seems that deaf people know that there are boundaries, right? but maybe they don't understand boundaries. Maybe they don't understand. They know that concept, and I would say it depends. Some do, and some cross the line. Amen. <laughs> so really. You know, <coughs> in the church, many people who are learning signs at church because there are deaf people there and they want to help and communicate <coughs> with the deaf and help them to understand and know what the um, preacher is saying and all of this, they're working with the group of people who, who use interpreters a lot. They really, the, the community doesn't really get what interpreters are supposed to do. So there's a lot of these, oh, come do this and come do that. And then we go out in the community, people go, oh, you're a church interpreter. Right? Hmm, you interpret at church. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. They're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, you know, I'm, so interpreters are experiencing that. They go out, they're trying to learn, and the hearing interpreters are not helpful and not supportive. You're a church interpreter. Spiritual. 
Yes, went to a hospital to visit a friend, had a professional interpreter. No, I'm fine. I can sign myself. <laughs> you're good, you're good. <laughs> and I'm going to move. <laughs> I'm sorry, I will come up here. I think it would be better if everyone just came up here. <laughs> I'm already teaching sim comic, which is not good, okay, not good. And um, voice interpreting, I don't need to be copy signing as well. So <laughs> I explained that I was visiting my friend, that I don't need an interpreter. Where you learn? Church? <laughs> Fine. So I just, I talked with my friends, ignored. <laughs> <laughs> they were doing their job, I, I understood that. But I just came to visit with my friend. I didn't need an interpreter. <laughs> so I just had to, that's all I thought to do. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's interesting because I would have said, y'all talk. I'm out of the room. You know, go for it. Uh, you don't need me. So I would have had a different response. Really rude. Really rude. Yeah. Um, just like we say, deaf people are all kinds, you know, they're, they're, uh, Happy, sad, fat, skinny, blah, 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 any, blah, 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 blah. Deaf or just like hearing, well, interpreters are the same. They're just, ah, uh, we're all over the place. So we're not the same and we'll experience a lot of different things. Think code of ethics means all interpreters will handle <coughs> every situation exactly the same. No, we just, so, what I am saying to you all, if, that, if nothing else, nothing else is, yes, we are interpreters. As Christians, we are going to behave ethically and morally. But we're not going to answer, if this, then this, uh, if that, then that. We can't answer that because every situation is different. But I'm going to put out there what our ID's standards are, just so we know. And we maybe we'll have time to kind of figure out how to apply that back and forth. Yes, sir. Yes, you can speak. This is one reason that I'm in this room. I'm trying to get some information from you all as interpreters, <clears throat> as to how you handle wearing the different hats as a church interpreter and using that church interpreter hat should be able to handle situations well within church, but when you go out in the community, then are you wearing a different hat? Are you wearing a hat as a professional interpreter? I'm looking for someone who is experienced and can, um, I can glean from their experience. If there was a paper, a standard paper, of some kind that I could share with people to our church to educate the church, especially people that in leadership and the interpreters themselves. Within our church, we have about five people who are acting as church interpreters with 30 years experience. And they have nothing to do with professional interpreters, which has caused the outside professional interpreters in the community, you know, we would love to have them come and visit, but once they come and see how we're doing it and how our church interpreters are handling situations, they get the heebie-jeebies and they won't come back. And we're trying very hard to bring those people in involve the professional interpreters and they don't like what they see. So when I go out in the community, I get feedback from them and they say, wow, those church interpreters, they've got a lot of pride in them and they stick together like glue and they don't 
make us feel included. And I appreciate the feedback, which I like, but they don't come back. They stay away. And so we had the inside people and the outside people. And they asked me, why am I, Carl, so supportive of both groups? And they said that I'm creating the problem. Well, 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 I'm the deaf guy here. And sometimes I look at the church interpreter and feel that their skills are not as good as they need to be. And I want to see them grow their skills and tell them, go out there in the community, go to workshops like this one. Learn and grow. And a lot of them say, I don't need to. I don't need to. We're good enough. You know, coach, stop complaining. And I'm, so I zip my lip. And then people say, why are you complaining? I say, because we have deaf members who have a variety of needs and communication skills. My wife does not benefit from these interpreters. And we both zip our lips. And the church leadership is going to have to speak up for the deaf members and the non-members. We have to speak up. Or I'm going to be the one in trouble, even though I'm the good guy. Wow. I mean, that's, that's a... That's a huge statement, yes, and I appreciate that because that happens, that happens. And, and you're crying inside, crying, well, oh, okay. well, that's what it feels like you keep saying it. You feel like they're just not listening to you. And church and people who start, who learn to interpret at church come from that heart. They want to help. They want and that's the word that we hear used. Professional interpreters, we're not here to help. We're here to facilitate communication. Okay? I do this, I do this, and that's it. Church interpreters are like, oh, what do you need? And so you hit it. RID, professional interpreters look and go, those boundaries, you're crossing all over them. You're, you're too friendly with the deaf group. And then the church interpreters are going, you guys are so cold. I don't want to be like you. I want to have this. And it's that struggle. And I don't think RID, or well, we're going to say the CPC, I don't think it's in conflict. We can still be good interpreters and follow ethics. But I'll tell you myself, as, as a Christian, that's really... It's like it's just the last six months. I've been an interpreter for many years. I'm old. I've been nationally certified since 1980. 36 years, okay, been nationally certified. So I have like, you know, I'm, 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 I'm. And just within the last six months, I started going, I've allowed that almost to become my excuse. I'm the interpreter, so I don't talk to deaf people about church, about Jesus, about God at all. When they come visit, I'm like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. let my husband talk to them, and I'm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I've allowed myself to do this, and I'm just going, wait a minute, that's wrong. So now I am having this struggle, and I will tell you, this class has been the hardest one for me to prepare because I have that struggle. Going, do you get where I'm coming from? Is this making sense to you? Okay, okay. So it's a struggle. Yes, sir. I'm hoping that outside of this classroom, you have something to share with us that I can bring home to prepare better workshops like this for next national workshop. Because I know there are other good people here, like Dennis over here, very experienced interpreter, CODA, church interpreter, teacher, church leader, professional interpreter out there. Maybe he can help. We can develop a team and develop something. That's something. I got to get to know him, yes. That's my organization. Yes. I'm telling you. I don't have that paper that you want. <laughs> I don't have it. <laughs> there is no paper for that. There's no paper for that. The thing with church interpreters and the professionals 
is right, they're separate. But some church interpreters doesn't want to learn. And that's the problem. We have the same thing in our church. We have some that want to go to workshop, learn, 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 learn. Have some don't want to change. So how do you correct? Okay, that's why I'm giving you the, the code of conduct here. Um, did you get one? Did you get one? Okay. Used to be called Code of Ethics, and it was, oh, you know, a couple of paragraphs on a sheet of paper. Well, in 2005, after much discussion and, and wordsmithing, um, a new Code of Professional Conduct was established. So that's in 2005. We still call it Code of Ethics. You, that's the sign. If people, if you say CPCs a lot of times, interpreter CPC and the deaf person will go, huh? And you go, Code of Ethics. Oh, okay. So they still know Code of Ethics, but the CPC, not so much. Um, there are now seven tenants with guiding principles and illustrative behaviors. Um, and we're not going to talk about all seven. There's just no time. But I wanted to kind of hit on a few. So um, let's go to number two. Is where I want to start. This one is talking about behaving professionally, but what it says is evaluate your people and match their language style. Well, that takes skill, okay? And keep in mind, church interpreting is where many people start learning signs, but that's like the most critical, important interpreting job you're ever going to find. These are people's souls. It's their salvation. we got to get it right when we're putting it out there. Um, and so many times we say, oh, you can sign. Come here, sit in the chair. And we're like, hee, 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 hee. And deaf people are going, oh, better than nothing. Okay. Do you want better than nothing for yourselves? No, no, we want good. So, two, uh, two point three says, go to trainings, and go to learn, and guess what? You go, and maybe it's, it's, it's just another kind of persecution. Oh, you're a church interpreter. Yeah, well, yeah, and I'm here to learn because I am going to be an awesome church interpreter. <laughs> Don't let them push you down and keep you from going to improve your skills. Don't, don't let that. That's why I started by saying, I started in church. And I tell everybody, I started in church. Come on. <laughs> let me, let's have it. Let's have it. Uh, so, professional, go to trainings, go to workshops. 2.5 says, don't refrain from providing counsel, advice, or personal opinions. Right there, that's, ah, yeah. Not supposed to advise. What if you are interpreting a Bible study? Just interpret. What if you want to start a Bible study? Okay, 
you're not interpreting now, you're on your own time, that's fine. But if you're interpreting a Bible study, well, professional says, I'm just interpreting, I add nothing. Okay, conflict, right? right. Because the deaf are going to look and say, that's a question. <coughs> we, got this, 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 we are asking you the question, and if you always go, well, let's, let's, then you're kind of, I'm not going to say abdicating your responsibility, but that's a struggle for me. Let me just put it that way. Let me just say that. Um, opinions. We're friends. Deaf people are relational. Okay? That, you know, deaf heart, deaf heart, have you heard that expression? Oh, okay, okay. And it is signed like deaf but it's signed at the heart. Deaf heart. Deaf heart. Dennis, deaf heart. Deaf heart. How do I know the sign? Or how do you know? Deaf people know. Deaf people know. You know, right? You know it. You it's in the head. Some are not. Some people don't have deaf heart. That's right. It's in the gut. Deaf, it's your gut. Deaf, look, go. Nice person. Good heart, yes. But not deaf heart. They don't think communication accessibility. They don't think lights. They don't they don't have all that. Nice person. And it, you know, the deaf heart. Y'all with me? Okay, okay. I know I'm, we're just kind of rambling, but um, I have no idea how we are on time. What time? Thirty. Can't even finish. Okay, so let's move on. Then we'll just jump to number three, which is conduct. And let's see. And that just talks about putting yourself in the right place, uh, wearing the right clothes, um, talking with everyone and making sure that your behavior is appropriate to the situation. And there was one thing. 3.3 says avoid performing dual roles. All right. So what about the interpreter during worship who goes and teaches the Bible class. Okay, and I, we're going, yeah, yeah, we know what that's like, right? Well, that's dual roles within the same setting. Who's going to teach the Bible class? The guy who knows sign language, right? Right? So we're not solving that one today. I, I don't see a conflict. I don't, personally, I'm just saying conflict. But some people, and that's why the professional interpreters come and go, oh, no. Can you come join us? More hands, we can split up the jobs, right? We don't have enough hands. I'm just a little Always. We're Christians first, so we behave morally and ethically anyway, right? Right? Yes? Shake your head, sister. Yes, yes. Okay. All right. Number six. Number six. Let's go to that. Business practices. And this is talking about um, interpreters have the right to request payment. Interpreters also have a responsibility to provide pro bono work within the same. So it's at your discretion. 
that's a, that's a big question that's always come up. Do we pay the interpreter? Um, it's time for y'all to talk, okay? Time for y'all to talk. What do you think? Pay the interpreter? Should church pay the interpreter? Sorry, we'll stop in a minute. <laughs> Sorry. Does anybody do it differently? Yes. I agree with you and with what you just said. But just recently, our church has finally accepted what I call the uh, interpreter intern. We have um, an interpreter who is from the interpreter training program, and that interpreter happens to be from the Church of Christ. So we welcomed her into our services. As just that word, in turn, and she comes and interprets at the church, and she is very humble. She's very knowledgeable about the Church of Christ doctrine, and she is in the deaf ladies classroom, and the two of us have interviewed and talked, and we've made an agreement to pay her. <clears throat> Some interns are trained without pay. Some can get paid, but in her situation, We've made the agreement to pay her during her internship as a six-week period. So we've set some funds aside for that purpose. And then when she is trained, when she's completed, I asked, you know, what are your plans after the internship? Because um, she already has a church home. And I think... Uh, She's decided to stay with her church home three Sundays a month and come to our church one Sunday a month. And if she, you know, perhaps depending on the planning that we have, if we can schedule her for a time, then we pay her. But if she's not scheduled, she's willing to interpret at no charge. So we kind of have some flexibility in that situation. But she comes to our church once a month now, and we are blessed once a month to have her. Even though we have our church interpreters and, uh, um, you know, we're used to them. And the church interpreters are impressed with her, and we're kind of working it out with the help of the Lord, good Lord above. Yes. Well, with us, they hire Billy. They get the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. And ah, we have the family. <laughs> That's strictly a personal, I think, you want to get paid and advocate for being paid. Some people get paid, and then they turn around and put that same money back in the collection plate. Some people do not get paid. Um, that's, that's up to you. That's up to you because you're working. When you are interpreting class and service, you are working and you're not listening. You're not writing notes. You're not chasing rabbits and going, whoa, 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 whoa. No, you're working. So that's a call. Um, I think that's one thing that most churches and elders of the hearing don't understand that the interpreter is really working when they're interpreting. They're not just listening to a sermon. They're changing it for the left. Interpreters and the sound guys, the camera guys, they're the only ones from get to go that are working. 
Everybody else, you know, they may go up and come back, go up and come back, switch out, and they get that chance. But we're working from yet to go. And so that aside, we have to have a way of maintaining our own personal study and our own personal growth. Because if we're a, I'm there three times a week and I'm interpreting, after a while you start going, I'm, I'm not growing. I'm kind of, huh. And then that makes some interpreters burn out. Burn out. And then that people are like, ah, you can't burn out. But they haven't, they haven't gotten that need. They haven't worked through it. And so we need to grow too. So did you think you were coming in here and I was going to answer everything and we were going to go out? No. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> That's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. <laughs> and, and truthfully, you're unique. I would love to have you in our church, <laughs> for, to be perfectly honest. But what happens? You have deaf heart. You got you got the church, you got the community <coughs> interpreting, and there are not many interpreters who are that way. I can think of one other person, Dennis, right over there, Coda. But I think I'd like to recommend Dennis to give a presentation at next year's workshop where he shares his experience. And I look forward to National Christian Workshop that week of having a workshop for interpreters and encouraging deaf leaders to be involved in working with the professional interpreters while working with church interpreters to make things better for the church interpreters and better for the professional interpreters. It just grows the work throughout the community. And the deaf community in, itself is benefited. It aids the church and the elders need to be educated. Because I, I, I struggle with this. It's ongoing, the challenge that I face. And they realize that my heart is right and they've supported me, which is good and it helps me feel more comfortable, but I thank the Lord for that. And I pray and beg that the Lord will help me by providing wisdom and that God has encouraged me to go out, not for myself, but for the other deaf people around and hearing people who are sitting there in their comfortable spots, in their comfort zones. And we got to get out of those comfort zones. Hearing people, we need to show our hearts to all people. We need to have deaf equivalency, include those who are hard of hearing, men, women. And I know so many churches say, oh, we can't have women. They're not equal to men. And I'm like, oh, I hate to use the word, you know, persecution. What's your word that you, what was that word? Personality. 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 No, no, no. No, no, not personality. No. Personality. Oh, yeah. Patronizing. I was like, I, I had the word, but I saw the P, and I was going, I don't have a P. I was thinking oppressive, but patronizing. Look now, patronizing. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And I hate to say this. I always inform the church elders, please do not think that I don't respect you as elders. That's not the case. But I need to let you know that I read from the Bible, that God tells me, do not fear any man. Be bold. So, I said, God's <laughs> testing me. My heart's pounding. It's about to come out of my chest. But I've got to speak up and hope and pray that the interpreter is interpreting accurately <laughs> what I'm saying. And then it turned out that the eldership understood me. And everything worked from there. Even though one of the elders approached me in my office and said, good job, God bless you, I'm praying for you. 
I said, I understand you. Don't worry. If you have a problem, you come talk to me one-on-one -on -one and before going to the entire eldership. And I was like, great. Okay. Okay. That's fine. How do you deal with elders that prefer men as interpreters? We have all women. But it's, every eldership is different. Our eldership is flexible on oh. that. So it depends on your church. Not every congregation is the same. My favorite passage to repeat that is in 1 Corinthians 14, starting about verse. What is it? Okay, let's see. Let's see. And now it talks about interpreting in the church. It said, interpreting it doesn't name a sex of a male or female. But it basically says, if everyone doesn't understand, sit down and shut up. Thank you. But um, that scripture was 1 Corinthians 14, 26. Mm -hmm. 26, 7, down to where it's talking about translated down to about 34, 31, 34. Okay. And um, I will tell you, we asked several people to speak on the topic of the role of the interpreter, gender of the interpreter, and does that, in, and we got turned down. Many people said, I, I can't teach that class. I can't teach that class. So Frank accepted, but he said, I'm going to have to study hard. So he will be teaching that this week. But uh, so we'll just see. But obviously, I think it's okay. I do it. I'm a female interpreter, but I respect people's feelings on that. So that's just a hundred, another layer. The bell has rung. <laughs> We're not finished. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we still have more to go. Okay. I told the president of a lot of Christian colleges that he's now deceased. We need to want to meet in terms of Christian meeting. Well, interestingly, and I'll put this out there, my husband and I have gone to polishing the pulpit for three years in a row, and their leadership has not wanted a woman to interpret. Has not. And last year they told us they they tried to hire, get some men to come. None. They told us, okay, sit in the back and don't bother other people. He was like, we enjoy polishing the pulpit. It's like this, but bigger. Um, and so. Then my son, student at Free Parliament, he was involved in some meeting, and um, he said, "Why doesn't Free Parliament lectureships have interpreters?" And they're like, "Will you take that on?" Sure. So last year, last February, we had four interpreters, four deaf people interpret at the front every session. It was all male, female, didn't matter. Went to classes all day long. Oh, they said next year they want to grow that even more. And they what they have is uh, something called open forum. That is where they have open microphone. It's like an hour and a half every afternoon. And they have one, two, or three people in standing here and people come up and just ask any question dinosaurs da 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 you know any question and the preachers just ba, 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 answer those questions so we interpreted all week long waiting waiting i mean i'm interpreting going i'm waiting for somebody to come up and ask can women interpret in front of the church one week long Nobody asked the question. To me, that showed acceptance. 
that they understood the role and what the, the process was. Wow, so from now on, we're going to Free Hardman in February. That's what we're doing. Okay, time's gone, time's up, we have to go. I enjoyed it, thank you for your participation, and let's talk more throughout the week, okay? Because there's a lot more to talk about. We're done, we're done, I'll stop. <laughs> Okay, I said she's still talking. I do. I need one for my own.